The EU has reached a deal for a $60 per barrel price cap on seaborne Russian oil aimed at significantly reducing Moscow's income and President Vladimir Putin's ability to continue to finance the war in Ukraine. The holdout to Poland backed the deal, which stops countries paying more than $60 a barrel. The price cap, an idea of the G7 nations, aims to slash Russia's revenues from selling oil while preventing a steep increase in international oil prices after an EU embargo on Russian crude takes effect on December the 5th. The introduction of the cap means that participating countries will only be allowed to buy oil and petroleum products transported via sea that are sold at or below the price cap. The $60 figure sets the cap near the current price of Russia's crude, which recently fell below $60 a barrel. There has been criticism that it is not low enough to cut into one of Russia's main sources of income, but this was the price cap that could be agreed due to the huge differences between participating nations. Public protests in China related to the government's COVID-19 restrictions have hit the global media following a fatal apartment fire in Urumqi, Xinjiang, which killed 10 people. Protests erupted in cities across China according to videos posted on China's Weibo and Twitter. Citizens across China blamed the deaths on the inability of fire and rescue services to access the building due to COVID-19 restrictions. Protests began in Urumqi and were followed by protests in several other Chinese cities, including Shanghai and Beijing. Many of the protests included hundreds of people, some included thousands, and all seem to focus on getting the government to ease or stop its zero COVID policy, with some crowds calling for freedom and the overthrow of Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party. Chinese COVID measures are among the strictest in the world as it continues to pursue lockdowns to suppress the virus through a zero COVID policy. The protests are in reality street protests where the demonstrators disperse after marching and protesting and the main focus of the protests are the COVID restrictions rather than the wider political principles. At the Geopolity we will be watching to see if these protests take on a political dimension against the Communist Party. Pakistan's Petroleum Minister visited Russia in order to pen a deal on oil and gas. The trip comes as Pakistan struggles to meet domestic gas supply needs as winter approaches, while battling to contain a current account deficit swelled by energy payments, mostly for oil. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif said that Pakistan was committed to expanding cooperation with Russia across all areas of mutual benefit, including food security, trade and investment, energy, defense and security. According to sources, Pakistan will save more than $2 billion annually with the implementation of energy projects with Russia, whereas buying petroleum products from Moscow would ease pressure on the foreign exchange reserves. With dwindling local gas reserves, the country has begun to ration supplies to residential and commercial consumers. Local media has reported that oil supplies remain tenuous owing to the difficulties in paying for imports. For the first time, fewer than half of the people in England and Wales described themselves as Christian the census 2021 has revealed. The proportion of people who said they were Christian was 46.2%, down from 59.3% in the last census in 2011. In contrast, the number who said they had no religion increased to 37.2% of the population. This is four out of every 10 people. Those identifying as Muslim rose from 4.9% in 2011 to 6.5% in 2021. These census results reveal many things about the UK. The role of religion has declined considerably over the decades, despite Britain's Christian heritage. Those with no religions are increasing and will have a large impact on legislation and the future orientation of the UK. Despite all the coverage Muslims and Islam receive, they are overall just 4 million out of a total UK population of 67 million much smaller than all the stories of the UK being swamped or the Muslims taking over the country.